In this paper, we present a dynamic grasping system that is both rotability aware and motion aware. The problem in this project is to pick up a moving object whose motion is not known a priori while also avoiding obstacles. Below is a video demonstration of our problem. The object moves along the red trajectory, surrounded by other object obstacles and a top slab obstacle. Compared to static environments, which has been studied for decades in the robotic community, there are many new challenges brought by the dynamic environment. Continuous changes in the environments require online and fast motion replanning. Motion understanding and prediction of dynamic objects become extremely important. Closed loop control becomes necessary. The approaching and closing motion of the grasp is non-trivial and timing of those motions is important. There are many exciting prior works in the literature of dynamic grasping, but there are some common assumptions they generally made. Many use this only top-down grasp. In some of their experiments, the target object moves very slow. Some systems need a human to signal the grasp execution to close the robot's fingers, and many assume a known object motion. In this project, we want to know if we can relax some of the assumptions and do a better job. Our system can be divided into three components, grass planning, object motion modeling, and arm motion generation. We'll first discuss the grass planning component. We use a grass database approach. For each object, we pre-generate a grass database containing 100 candidate grass. This grass generation is a two-step process. In the first step, we collect 1,000 grass in grass pave, and then we simulate each grass in the pipeline simulator with the physics turned on. Each grass is run for 50 trials, and we keep those grass with the success rate over a particular threshold. The grass planning problem in our system then becomes at each time step we need to pick a grass from the database. So here comes the trade-off, the size of the grass database versus the time to iterate through all grass in real time. In general, the more grass we have in the database, the more variety and coverage we have in the approach directions. But at the same time, the time spent iterating all the grass also increases with more grass. Given our database of 100 grass for each object, just iterating through all of them by simply checking reachability and computing IK is already infeasible in real time. To be able to have a big database and also a real-time grass planning algorithm, we borrowed the idea from our previous work. In this work, we introduced the concept of reachability. The intuition is grass stability does not guarantee grass visibility. For example, in the below images, we have a fat robot trying to grasp the green chips bucket. All the grass plotted using the arrows are equally stable, but only those red grass are reachable. The blue grass are infeasible either due to out of range or self collision. We introduced the idea of reachability space for each robot using sign distance field. For a 60 robot workspace, Including position and orientation, we first compute the binary reachability space by checking self-collision and IK. For example, in the below image, we show the binary reachability space of the fat robot. Green indicates reachable grasp, and red indicates unreachable grasp. We then create a sign distance field from this binary reachability space, so that for each grasp in the binary space, we assign continuous value. Grasp on the boundary between reachable and unreachable has a value of 0. Negative value means unreachable, and positive value means reachable. The magnitude of this value indicates the distance from the boundary. We now have a function that takes in a 60 grass pose and returns reachability value. Our previous work has shown that this function, used as an objective function along with other stability objective functions, can greatly improve the success rate of robotic grasping in static environments. In this project, we showed that it can also help a lot in dynamic environments. Firstly, Computing reachability using this function is much faster than computing inverse kinematics. This makes having a big grass database feasible in real time. Secondly, reachability can be an indicator of manipulability. Intuitively, more reachable grass are more likely to remain reachable in the future as object moves, reducing the number of grass switches. This video visualizes the reachability value of all the grass in the grass database as the sugar box moves. As we can see, those graphs that are more likely to be reachable have higher reachability values. We have discussed the reachability awareness of our grass planning components. Now, we'll talk about the motion aware part. The key observation for the motion awareness is that success rate of grasp depends on the motion of the object. Here is an example. Below are two graphs of the same pen and both are stable. 
but if the pen is moving towards the palm, the grass on the left is more robust to such motion. This video demonstrates the same idea using the pie blade simulation. All the grass shown here are stable grass, but as soon as the object starts moving, some grass fail and some grass maintain a high success rate. We define the motion wear quality for grass on an object to be the probability of success conditioned on object motion. Furthermore, we define the object motion to be a moving direction denoted by theta and a speed denoted by v. The goal is to have a function that takes the grass pose, theta, and v and gives us the motion wear quality. The most straightforward solution we can think of is to use machine learning. We define a classification problem. 1 indicates success and 0 indicates failure. We collect a data set of 10k grass attempts, each on 7 objects. For each of the data points, we sample grass from our database. We sample moving direction and sample speed. The simulator executes the grass and labels the data point. We train a multi-layer perception network for 100 epochs. We are able to achieve an accuracy of 0.96. We are able to achieve a false positive rate around 0.01 and a false negative rate around 0.1. The raw output after softmax layer indicates the probability of success, namely the motion wear quality given the current motion. We now have another function that runs pretty fast. It takes the grass pose, the moving direction and the speed and gives us the motion aware quality. This video visualizes the motion wear quality of all grass in the database of Sugarbox as it moves following the red trajectory. You can see that the quality value matches our intuition that grass facing the direction of the motion have a higher value of motion wear quality. Now that we have introduced the two functions, the reachability function and the motion wear quality function, we will now present the final grass planning algorithm that uses these two functions as two ranking functions to quickly filter and then select grass in our database in real time. For each target object, given the grass database G sub db, we will include the top five grass with highest reachability and the top five grass with highest motion wear quality into a future subset G sub F. We then pick the grass in G sub F that is closest to the current arm configuration. This makes sure the least arm motion is needed. We also tried a bunch of other ways to combine the two functions, including using a weighted combination of these two values. But experimentally, this method works the best. This video demonstrates the grass planning pipeline. On the left, we plot the final selected grass from our database. When a grass switch happens, we use a different color. On the right, we will visualize the reachability and the motion wear quality. We have discussed the grass planning algorithm of our project. We will now briefly talk about the object motion modeling component. We use a recurrent neural network, specifically an LSTM network, to model the motion of the target object. We create the dataset by randomly generating a linear, circular, and sinusoidal sequence of waypoints, 2000 each. The input to our network is a sequence of object poses and the output is a future pose. In the real robot experiments, we use DOPE to estimate object poses from RGB images in real time. Now let's talk about the last component, the arm motion generation component. In this component, given target arm configuration, we need to move the robot arm to reach that configuration. As we mentioned before, a big challenge in dynamic environments compared to static environments is that we need to keep replanning in real time. The popular group of sampling-based methods such as PRM or RRT do not work well in this situation due to the randomness in their generated trajectories. Here is an illustration of this problem. The green dot is trying to catch the red dot. It's using RRT as a planning algorithm to generate a collision-free path in each time step. You can see that due to randomness, the solutions of the current time step can be very different from the solution of the next time step. This translates to the real robot making wavy and jerky arm motion. The other group of popular methods is optimization-based methods. However, they are also not very suitable in this problem. They tend to provide a more optimal solution, but they are more time-consuming, making replanning in real time very hard. Our motion generation combines RRT and trajectory seeding. Specifically, we see the random tree using the solution from last time step. This has two advantages. We can achieve temporal consistency in the return path, and we can achieve a speed-up in computation. Now let's talk about the simulation experiments of this project. We run simulation in the PyBullet simulator on four different methods. Ours is a method that includes the top five graphs using both the reachability and motion wear quality ranking functions. The second one, reachability, only includes top 10 graphs with top reachability values. 
the third method, motion wear, only includes top 10 graphs with top motion wear qualities. The baseline method randomly picked 10 graphs from the graph database. We also run ablation study to research the importance of the other components. No trajectory seeding is a variant of ours, but without the trajectory seeding. No motion prediction is a variant of ours, but without motion prediction. We used two different robots in our experiments, the Miko arm and the UR5 with robotic gripper. We randomly picked seven objects from the YCB dataset as target objects. Note that we need to consider the size of the gripper to make sure the picked objects fit into the grippers. We evaluate our method on five different tasks. Linear, circular, sinusoidal, and static obstacles where we use the linear motion and put static obstacles randomly in the green rectangular region. To further reduce the workspace of the robot, we simulate a top slab obstacle over the linear trajectory. For each object, we run 100 trials with randomized d, l, theta, r. As shown in the bottom right image, d is the direction of the trajectory, l is the length of the trajectory, theta is the angle of the trajectory, and r is the distance of the trajectory to the robot arm base. This chart shows the experimental results on the four methods. Each number reported is the average over 700 trials. On the left, we have the results for Miko arm. On the right, we have the results for UR5. The x-axis shows different tasks. The y-axis is a success rate. There are a few things we would like to highlight here. Firstly, ours, reachability, and motion wear are always better than the baseline method. As you can see, the red, cyan, and green bars are always higher than the blue bar. Because these ranking functions help the system to quickly focus on those graphs that are either reachable or robust given the current motion. Secondly, ours is almost always better than reachability or motion wear only. This is because ours includes both top graphs with high reachability value and high motion wear quality. It has a wider range of good graphs to pick from. Thirdly, reachability only is better than motion wear only. As you can see, the cyan bar is almost always higher than the green bar. This result indicates that reachability awareness is more important than motion awareness in dynamic environments. This makes sense because intuitively, even though a grass is robust given the current object motion, if it's not reachable, that's a waste of computation time. This is another plot of the experimental results from the ablation study. It seems that trajectory seeding is really important for the top slab task and the sinusoidal task. As we can see, the largest gap between the red bar and the purple bar happens in the area highlighted in the rectangles. For top slab task, the workspace is the most restricted and without seeding, the motion planning will take a long time. For sinusoidal task, the target object is jiggling a lot, and without trajectory seeding, there will be a huge difference in solutions from different time steps and the arm will wave a lot as the target already moves away. It also seems that motion prediction is really important in dynamic grasping. Without motion prediction, for some tasks, the success rate is very low. This makes sense because without prediction, the arm is always trying to move to an obsolete pose and will never catch up with the target. Another thing we'd like to highlight is that UR5 suffers more from no prediction. This is because the robotic gripper is much more narrow than the Miko gripper which requires a very precise approach and aggressive motion. Without motion prediction, it is very hard to achieve it. This video demonstrates the importance of trajectory seeding. You can see without seeding, the arm is waving a lot. The second video compares ours versus no prediction. Without prediction, the arm simply knocks down the object as it is trying to reach a grasp plan using an old post of the object. We further investigate the importance of reachability by varying the distance of the trajectory to the arm base using linear motion. The x-axis is the distance and the y-axis is the success rate. As shown in the plot, reachability plays a more important role when the object is extremely close and far from the robot arm. Those areas are where the workspace is most restricted and being reachability aware is able to alleviate the performance drop. Here are some Miko simulation results for different tasks. Here are some UR5 simulation results for different tasks. We then validate our algorithm on the real robot hardware with UR5 and the robotic gripper. The conveyor belt is moving at 4.46 cm per second. Thanks for watching.